The much-anticipated appearance of former PM Boris Johnson before the COVID inquiry finally happened today. And there's a lot to unpack. From interruptions... Of please, please stop. ...COVID stop. victims. Please sit down. ...to sweary messages yet again. Totally f***ing hopeless. And the former Prime Minister seemingly holding back tears. <sighs> Boris Johnson faced intense scrutiny as he defended his handling of the pandemic. The day began when a protester had to be removed from the former Prime Minister's evidence session after interrupting his apology. As his evidence got underway, Johnson used his first answer to apologise to his victims, saying he was glad to be there. He added that he wanted to say how sorry I am for the pain, the loss and the suffering of the COVID victims. He was interrupted and heckled as he spoke, with Baroness Hallett forced to remove the person shouting. Once questioning was underway by Hugo Keith KC, Johnson admitted that there wasn't a particularly coherent messaging from the government. One problem we had that I mention is that uh, because of the uh, very, you know, natural uh, and proper right of the d devolved administrations to have their own approach. Sometimes there was a bit of... Co so the BBC News would, would have one message from number 10, then a slightly different one from Scotland or wherever. I think we need to sort that out in future. Despite criticism of Matt Hancock by Dominic Cummings last month during the COVID inquiry, Johnson defended the former health secretary and claimed Cummings lobbying to get Hancock fired was part of politics. So, uh, first of all, in, in politics, there's uh, never a time when you're not, if you're prime minister, you are constantly being lobbied by somebody to sack somebody else. Uh, it's just what I'm afraid happens. And... Uh, it's, it's part of life. Everybody's constantly militating against some other individual for some reason of, of, of their own. It's just, it's just the, I'm afraid that's the, the nature of it. Uh, it is perfectly true that this advisor in particular uh, thought, uh, had a low opinion of, of the health secretary. I thought he was wrong. Uh, I stuck by the health secretary. I thought the health secretary... Uh, worked very hard and whatever. He may have had uh, defects, but I thought that he uh, was doing his best in very difficult circumstances, and I thought he was a good communicator. The WhatsApp messages shared between government ministers and advisers have been integral to this inquiry. Boris Johnson was asked about his disclosure of those messages. Here's what he said. I don't know the exact reason, but it looks as though it's something to do with the app going down and then uh, coming up again. The string of profanity-laden WhatsApps from senior officials complaining about the government's performance is one of the pieces of evidence against Johnson, but he sought to dismiss their importance. If, as I say, if you'd had the views of the Mandarinate about the Thatcher government in unexpurgated WhatsApps, my lady, uh, I think you would have found that they were pretty fruity. Um, it's, it's WhatsApp conversation is um, intended to be, uh, though clearly it isn't, uh, ephemeral. Um, it, it tends to, uh, pejor the, to the pejorative and the hyperbolical. So what failures did Boris Johnson admit today? Well, he said he was not sure where the government decision-making had led to materially a larger number of excess deaths. He did concede, though, that he rarely read the minutes at SAGE meetings. Johnson admitted in hindsight that it might have been valuable to have read the advice in an unpasteurised form, but at that time he was more than content with the very clear summaries he was getting. With many of the families and representatives of those who died during the pandemic in attendance, it was an emotionally charged day, and it's fair to say the emotions also got the better of the former Prime Minister, as he described 2020 as a tragic year. And it's, it goes, to, because it's, I'm afraid it's what happened. 
we have to be realistic about 2020, the whole year, that whole tragic, tragic year. We did lock down, but then it bounced back.